Hi everyone, it's Annabelle and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to be looking at a couple of orchids in a spotlight video where we take a closer look at them, talk a little bit about their care, the blooms and kind of how I feel about them. So I was going to do this in place for what's in bloom for last month and it kind of got put on hold with the whole move um, which is now nearly done. So I wanted to take a closer look at these orchids that were in bloom for May and June. So these orchids are the Neophonesia falcata, Goju fucarin, and the, what I believe to be, Cycnotius lemaniae, which is, um, it's a wrong ID, it's bloomed out as the incorrect ID, but I'll talk about it later why I think it may be the lemaniae. First of all, the Neophonesia falcata, Goju fucarin, which is the one that we see in front of us, and I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. There's a few different spellings of this online. Um, I think this label is spelled a little bit incorrectly that I got it with, so I will correct that at a later date, but I'll pop up on screen what I find to be the most common spelling, and I know Neophonesias tend to be a very niche specialism, and people who get into them really get into them. So if anyone who's watching who's kind of a more Neophonesia um, grower and has a lot of experience with this and knows if this is the correct spelling or not, if you could let me know I would be really grateful. So this Neophonesia is absolutely beautiful. It has the classic white Neophonesia flowers but as you may have noticed we have some stunning leaf variegation to go with it. Neophonesias are very very compact growers. They're in the Vandacious kind of family um, but they are quite distinct from Vandas in that they are very easy to grow potted People often grow them kokodama, which is in moss balls, which is the traditional Japanese type of display. This is the spelling of the goji fukaran that I have on the label. Now we have a gorgeous, gorgeous white flower, which is designed to attract nighttime pollinators like moths. Often when you've got a white flower, it's indicative that it's trying to attract nighttime pollinators and therefore it's going to be night fragrant. Near Phoenicia Falgata, I do definitely find is fragrant more in the afternoon and evening. It tends to lose its fragrance in the morning. And we have a wonderful, wonderful fragrance of what I would describe as white chocolate. To me, it really hits me as a white chocolate fragrance. However, I have seen it described as vanilla and coconut and kind of fruity. Um, to me, it, I can't detect any coconut hints and I do think of this as like a white chocolate kind of fragrance which ties in with other people's reports of like a vanilla fragrance. Very sweet and absolutely love it. I love white chocolate though, so what's not to love? It's a beautiful fragrance. It won't overpower you, but on a larger specimen you can get multiple fans um, and when you've got multiple blooms, I can imagine that this fragrance is probably quite strong. Neophonesia and Angrecoids have the most elegant flowers and it's all to do with this beautiful nectar spur that you can see arching behind the flower down from the lip. Absolutely stunning and it kind of indicates the type of pollinator must have a very long uh, proboscis, is that what they're called? The kind of tongue to get down into the nectar spur and it's a really interesting adaptation that some of these orchids have and I think it is to do with the moth pollinators. So if we take a closer look at this orchid, you can see that the tips of the flowers are kind of almost tinged in like a slight yellowish, but it's very, very slight. You wouldn't notice it really unless you really took a closer look. They are mostly white without colour. You can get Neophonesia varieties that are coloured. Um, which I think is really interesting. Often they've been hybridised with other orchids and then bred back to Neophonesia though, I think. The pure species Neophonesia original colour form is the white form and they tend to grow in slightly cooler zones in Japan. So if you look them up online, you'll often see them listed as cool to intermediate growers, although they are very tolerant of warmth as well. So I think they're really versatile orchids. It's a really beautiful orchid and I love Neophonesia, it's really compact growing and they are supposed to be summer blooming so um, I've had a couple of questions on how to trigger blooming and I think it is just seasonal variations, I've never had an issue with blooming this, this wasn't even under that bright light, it was just under my under counter LEDs on my shelf with my fowls, so it was fowl type lighting grown under LEDs but they're not grow lights so I would say kind of a bright medium light and if you're growing on a windowsill you probably want nice and bright light but no direct sunlight I would say. I do love the Neophonesia standard form but what is really interesting about this variety is as we mentioned as you can see the beautiful variegation on the leaves. 
So the variegation is purely striped on the outside of the leaves and it gives a really wonderful effect. It kind of comes in white and then fades out to a kind of yellow type of variegation. One thing that I would say is the variegated forms of the Neophonesia, I think from this one, tend to be a little bit slower growing. This variety is quite slow growing for me. One thing I found really interesting is, along with the variegated leaves, it also put out a variegated flower spike. As it was forming, I was super excited that I had a new growth coming, and then it turned out to be a spike. I actually would have preferred a new growth, because this one came with not that many roots, and it's taken a while to establish, and it's finally getting to a stage where it's putting out bigger and bigger leaves, which means that we're on the right track, and it has a good root system now. I'm keeping it in a mix of Ceramis and Lekka, because they don't like the dry top layer of Lekka. You can imagine they're often grown in moss balls. They don't really like dryness and the like dry layer a little bit too dry for them. So you can see the kind of green striping on the spike, which I think is so, so beautiful. It's got green and white striping along this length of the spike leading up to the flowers. And the buds came in variegated as well, which is so, so cute. I just think it's beautiful. I actually would have preferred a new growth on this, to be perfectly honest. And I do really hope that it puts out a new growth for me soon, because I would love to have a pot full of roots, but we've got three or four good roots in here, and I will take that for now. Um, it's a wonderful Neophonesia variety. I have a lot of Neophonesia hybrids and a couple of pure Neophonesias that I got in a bundle. Um, couple of years back which are doing really well and they all grow a lot faster and make new fans a lot faster than this color form so I think it is to do with the variegation making it a slightly slower grower which is something that's reported quite a lot with house plants I think the lack of the um, chlora plus chlorophyll in that section does reduce the amount that the orchid can actually make energy from sunlight so it's super interesting and i hope that if you like the blooms you maybe be encouraged to try getting one because i really find neophonesias to be very forgiving and quite easy to grow um for like a little compact foundations type and i think they're wonderful so that's the neophonesia falcata gyojo fucarin which i've been told apparently means little castle Next, we're going to talk about the Cygnotus that I have in bloom at the moment, which is the Cygnotus Leimanii, I believe, after consulting with a few people on a forum. And the general consensus was Leimanii. Despite it being labelled and sold as Cygnotus Peruvianum, I did contact the seller and they told me they thought it was uh, Cygnotus Varchevitsii, which uh, they said, oh, it's much rarer by far than Cygnotus Peruvianum. No, it's not really here, but you know, okay, fair enough. They sold me a healthy plant and it's bloomed. It's just an incorrect ID. I don't necessarily expect them to do anything about that. It has a wonderful fragrance, which reminds me of like floral banana fragrance, which is very reminiscent of the Cygnodes Jumbo Puff, which has a uh, Cygnodes Varchevitsii or Chlorochylon in its parentage. I will double check and put that up on screen. Um, so it seems like the banana -y fragrance is something that's very common to Cygnodes species. One thing that I would say about this, although I absolutely love the bloom, they remind me of beautiful, elegant yellow green swans is I struggle to keep this as more than one growth at a time and this is apparently quite common with some Cygnotus species so naturally they tend to grow in very small clumps sometimes even just single pseudobulbs and that's what I'm finding with this I can't seem to keep it as more than one pseudobulb when I got it it was two pseudobulbs including a new growth and it killed off one, then it started a new growth, and I got to two pseudobulbs, and now it's killing off the back growth. So apparently I can only keep this as one pseudobulb, um, which is a real shame. But, you know, if that's just how they grow, then I guess I'm not doing anything wrong. If I if, if it was because I'm doing something wrong, then that would be a real cause of cons for concern, and that's something that I've had to kind of just get my head around, that maybe this is just how it wants to grow. Um, so we'll see over time if it slowly diminishes then maybe i'm doing something incorrectly it seems to be growing very well though the new growth it put out is smaller than the previous growth now i got this in autumn and it was just starting a new growth then uh, the seller told me he had recently imported them so it's on a different time zone basically it's on a different hemisphere to us so it's now finished its new growth and is flowering in early summer so really 
I don't know what it's going to do now because it should now be going dormant but we're now hitting the peak of a growing season so I guess it's going to stay dormant over summer and winter and maybe start again in spring which might be a quite a long dormancy for it it's a I think it's quite difficult buying very seasonal orchids when they're out of season and getting them to sync up with your hemisphere so this could take even a couple of years for me to get it on track but I hope I can wonderful flowers wonderful fragrance and the flowers are actually very long lasting so these flowers last about a month and putting out this fragrance the whole time which is just wonderful now for anyone who doesn't like fake banana fragrances maybe not for you but consider it because it's absolutely stunning like how unique and special are these blooms but it is a very strong fragrance so if you're not a fan of like banana flavored um you know children's medicine type banana flavor or foam banana sweets if you're not a fan of that fragrance this might be a little bit much for you but it's stunning like and how unique are these blooms and look at where the pollen is located so it's located like on the i can't even work out the anatomy of this flower it's absolutely beautiful maybe when it's established i'll be able to get multiple pseudobulbs out of it let me know what you think if you've got any species sick notice um just a really beautiful plant and what's not to love about these blooms my favorite orchid and the orchid that is my profile image is the sick nodes jumbo puff the jumbo puff has very long lasting blooms and is much easier to grow and it tends to form larger clumps because of the more modes in its parentage so if you like the look of this Cygnokies species, um, but want something a little bit easier to manage, then I would definitely recommend starting off with the Cygnodes Jumbo Puff and then working up your way to Cygnokies species, um, because I have found this one a little bit disheartening with the way it likes to draw nutrients back into the new growths rather than retaining a larger kind of more specimen size bulb structure. And the Cygnodes Jumbo Puff also has the same fantastic fragrance, probably a bit stronger even. I hope you enjoyed this video on these two little orchid spotlights and thank you so much for watching today and joining me today. If you did enjoy this video then don't forget to give it a like or subscribe to my channel for more regular orchid updates and I'll see you guys all later. Bye!